Chapter 9 Beach Bash Bonanza It was Thursday on the Normandy, and everyone was stressed and worried because of combat. Garfield was in his room with the ladies trying to lighten spirits. Come on, ladies, let us have some kinky times, said Garfield to the ladies. I am not in the mod, Garfield. I am so worried about fighting collectors, said Miranda with refusal. I am so stressed out I can think so longer, said Tally, shaking her head, crying. This is nonsense. You women cannot take stress. Look at me. I am strong. I do not let weak collectors bother me, said Garfield, pounding his chest. Garfield chastisement made the women's cry like babies in a shower. Period, said all the ladies with crying eyes. Fine, you ladies win. What we need is a vacation to liven up stress. Let us go to the beach, declared Garfield with excitement. Beach party, yelled out everyone in joy. Joker, head to Beach Planet right now for fun in the sun, ordered Garfield with vacation. With Garfield's orders, the Normandy zoomed through space for vacation getaway, like seagulls flying for winter. When the Normandy arrived on the beach planet, Garfield and crew got out for summer fun. Miranda and Tally were playing Jack and Samara in a game of beach volleyball while in skimpy bikinis. Garfield was at the bar, drinking and shooting breezes with bartender Ted. This is beach bum life, said Garfield, with relaxation, as he sipped his pina colada and listened to Beach Boy's music on the stereo. Garfield, please put suntan lotion all over my body so I do not get sunburn, asked Kasumi with seduction. I will be right there, sweet stacks, responded Garfield, with love-making ideas. Garfield rubbed Kasumi all over with suntan lotion, stroking her firm body with his manly hands. Garfield took extra care on her special areas so they do not get sunburned. Thank you, Garfield. Your strong hands take me to space beaches unknown, said Kasumi with dreaminess. As Garfield returned to the bar for relaxation, he saw a sexy female Hanar approach him with sassy walk. Hello, Garfield. I saw the sexy massage you just gave. I am Hannah the Hanar, and I want to get to know you better, said the Hanar with introduction. Let me get you a drink, then I will show you all you want to learn, said Garfield with flirtations. Elsewhere on the island, Garrus and Jacob were walking along the beach. They were wearing flower-patterned shirts and shorts for beach comfort. Garrus was also wearing a straw hat. What is that? said Garrus, pointing to a mysterious object in the sand. Garrus and Jacob went closer for personal inspection. It looks like Tiki Idol, said Garrus to Jacob. We should keep it as a souvenir, said Jacob with excitement. With their new souvenir, Garrus and Jacob walked back to the bar to watch the girls play volleyball. Tali was jumping up to hit the ball with her hands when she slipped and fell, twisting her ankle and making her bathing suit fall off. What happened? cried out Garrus with worry. I fell with bad luck. Only bad luck could cause this fall, cried Tali with sadness. This is my kind of bad luck said Jacob, looking at naked Tally. Oh, you boys, cried out Tally in embarrassment. Oh yeah, said Garrus, high-fiving Jacob. Let me see that tiki idol, demanded Samara, taking the tiki idol. This tiki idol is cursed, said Samara, with superstition. Do not be crazy, woman, laughed Garrus with mockery. That tiki idol will give bad luck to all, said Samara with warning. I do not believe you. I am keeping it. It is mine, said Garrus with stubbornness. 
Meanwhile elsewhere on the island, Dr. Morden Solis was preparing for a surf-off with surfer Chad, with Normandy at stake. Okay, Frogman, if I win, the Normandy is mine. If you win, you are declared new king of the beach, declared Chad in challenging voice. You are on. I will show you that scientists can be surfers too, roared Dr. Morden Solis with determination. Dr. Morden Solis and Chad went into water with surfboards with crowd watching. At first, the surf off was close, but Dr. Morden Solis gained speed and began taking the win. The crowd began chanting, Dr. Morden Solis! Dr. Morden Solis! for support. All was well until Garrus and Jacob showed up for watching. With suddenness, Dr. Morden Solis' surfboard began rocking and he fell into water, causing Chad to take the win. Haha, <laughs> losers! I win! Normandy is mine! said Chad with arrogant voice. How could I lose? It is not possible! said Dr. Morden Solis with disbelief. Could it be the cursed Tiki Idol? asked Jacob with questions. Yes, it is that cursed Tiki Idol! I felt mysterious force make me trip! said Dr. Morden Solis with rage. Garfield was still at the bar, chatting with the sexy Hanar lady, when he saw all the arguing. Excuse me, my swimming sweetheart, but I have business, said Garfield, excusing himself. Be back soon, buttercups, said Hannah the Hanar with adoration. Garfield strutted over like ambassador, ready to solve disputed with Iron Fist. What is this squabbles? demanded Garfield with leadership. Normandy is mine, I was lost in surf off, handed over, yelled Chad with snoot. I lost because of cursed Tiki Idol, it is not fair, said Dr. Morden Solis with protest. Enough of this, that idol must be returned to native for culture, said Garfield with respect. We will go into jungle to return idol to natives, said Jacob and Garrus together with unison. Yes, I will have a rematch with Chad for Normandy. No curse can touch my surf skills, said Garfield with athleticism. You are on, Garfield. I will show all ladies who is real, man, said Chad with haughty laugh. I will spank you like a boy in summer school, said Garfield with discipline. Garfield and Chad headed into the water with their surfboards to begin their surf-off. Meanwhile, Garrus and Jacob ran into the jungle to search for the natives to return the cursed Tiki Idol. Where is the natives? asked Jacob with frustration. Over there, pointed Garrus, pointing at the natives. Garrus and Jacob rushed to the natives to return the cursed Tiki Idol to its rightful owners. Please accept this cursed Tiki Idol for cultural exchange, said Jacob with respect for all cultures. Every person is like rainbow, different and special, said Garrus with important message. The native chieftain took the cursed Tiki Idol and looked at it. This cursed Tiki Idol is cursed. It was made by the Reapers, said the chieftain with worry. What? said Garrus and Jacob at once. We must perform ritual dance to uncurse it, said Chieftain. Garrus and Jacob began dancing around the idol while the Chieftain chanted words for magic. Meanwhile, back at the surf-off, Garfield was showing off his moves, doing one-handed and one-legged surfing. Chad looked on with jealousy and Garfield whizzed past him. Garfield all of a sudden felt his surfboard wobble. Garfield began struggle on his board, and Chad began to pass him. Haha, <laughs> Garfield, soon I will be galaxy surfing champ! Mocked Chad with interspace mockery. Seeing Chad pass him, Garfield calmly took out his desert eagle 
and shot Chad in the kneecaps, making him fall off his surfboard. Ah! Screamed Chad in losing despair. Looks like I got a leg up, said Garfield with cool style as he surfed to victory to adoring crowds. Everyone chanted Garfield's name in joy, and women threw their clothes at him. Meanwhile, Garris and Jacob were finishing the ceremonies to uncurse Tiki idols. There, now ceremony is complete and curse is lifted, said the native chieftain with relief. Now we can return to Garfield with good news, said Garris to Jacob. Garris and Jacob then left to return to Garfield with news of curse removal. When arriving, they saw Garfield celebrating his surfing victory, one arm holding his trophy, the other around his new Hanar lady friend. In the water, Chad was being eaten by space sharks. Garfield, I see no curses can stop your surfing skills, said Garrus with admiration. Yes, I won by a foot, said Garfield with clever wit. We too have good news. We returned the curse to Tiki Idol. All is well, said Jacob with happiness. That is very good. Let us have Lua tonight for party celebration, declared Garfield with party spirit. Yay! chanted everyone with jumping up and down. That night, Garfield and crew celebrated the night dancing the hula and eating roast pork. Garfield sat by a bonfire while he serenaded the ladies with his ukulele. After a night of beach partying, Garfield and crew returned to the Normandy refreshed. I feel like new man, Garfield said to himself as he walked into the captain's quarters, muscular and tan. On entering, he saw a special visitor. It was Hana the Hanar. Garfield, you did not think you could get away without saying goodbye, said Hannah the Hanar with seductive voice. I am sorry, but now that we are alone, I will make you say goodbye to Pants and hello to Ecstasy, whispered Garfield in tone of seductive dove. Come here, flyboy, said Hannah the Hanar with a luring tentacle. Garfield grasped Hannah the Hanar with his masculine arms and held her to him. Hannah looked at Garfield with love in the eyes and caressed him with her tentacles with deep caress. Garfield licked her body all over in places she never knew and gave her extreme pleasure of Garfield variety. Hannah's tentacles explored Garfield's toned body like a car on the moon leaving no rock unturned body pressing each other like stacked pancakes. Garfield and Hannah rocked the cosmos until morning dawn. To be continued. Chapter 10 Derelict Reaper Debacle Garfield was in the engineer checking on engines for maximum usage and talking to engineers Gabby Daniels and Kenneth Donnelly. Garfield, engine needs repair, but it is too difficult for us, said Kenneth Donnelly with confused tongue. Yes, if only real man worked on engines, then maybe it could be fixed, cried Gabby Daniels with worried heart. Worry not, hot legs. I fix engine like pro mechanic. You should watch. You too might learn something, said Garfield with wrench in hand and courage in heart. Garfield leaped on the engine, ripping it apart with manly hands, with oil spurting on his muscles, turning Gabby Daniels on like warming engine. After twists and turns of the wrench, Garfield fixed engine with no problem. Garfield, you naughty grease monkey, you drive me wild like wrench in the night said Gabby Daniels, body dripping with oil and sweat. You are the naughty one, you sassy woman, said Garfield, as he put Gabby Daniels on his lap with mighty swoop 
and began to spank her with pleasuring fury as he laughed like love-making madman. Ha ha ha! laughed Garfield as he spanked Gabby with powerful hand, making her long for his manly body. Garfield, you rev me up like space engine in heat. Take me and work me over like model car, said Gabby Daniels with desire. Will do. I will go inside you and change your oil. Kenneth, I order you to watch so you can learn something. Captain's orders, said Garfield with insistence as he took Gabby took the back for heavy lovemaking. Time for remodeling, said Garfield as he took Gabby's clothes off and began rubbing her body. Kenneth looked on with approval as Garfield fondled Gabby's supple breasts with muscular arms. Garfield, pump me with gas, I am almost empty, moaned Gabby with pleasure. I am the gas man. I will pump you with highest quality fuel. Enjoy every drop, said Garfield, like a manly gas man, pumping the gas into a high quality sports car. Garfield thrust into Gabby, making scream with moaning passion as Kenneth looked on taking notes. Garfield and Gabby then lay exhausted from strenuous sexual exercise. Excellent job, Garfield. You are a true master, said Kenneth, giving Garfield a thumbs up. Thank you, Kenneth, but I think this saucy lady needs some more discipline, said Garfield as he put Gabby on his lap and spanked her some more. Garfield, spank me more. I love it. I need it, said Gabby, screaming. I will spank you into oblivion, growled Garfield seductively as he readied for more spanking pleasure. As Garfield spanked Gabby, the elusive man contacted Garfield through hologram for important mission. What is it? I am busy, said Garfield with Gabby on his lap. Garfield, I am sorry for interrupting you, but I have important mission for you. A derelict Reaper has been found. It has Reaper IFF codes. With these, you can go into Omega Relay and fight collectors, said the elusive man with request. Very well, I will head immediately and find Reaper IFFs so I can stomp collectors on my boot. Over and out, declared Garfield with speech. Joker, head to Derelict Reaper and make with haste, ordered Garfield as he continued to spank Gabby. With Garfield's orders, the Normandy sped to the Derelict Reaper like a sprinting gazelle leaping for joy. As the Normandy traveled, Garfield continued to spank Gabby, delivering pleasure to her rear and thighs. When Normandy arrived at the Derelict Reaper, Garfield let Gabby off, her hindquarters red with spanking. She would not sit for days, but she was happy. Garfield, please be careful. I will be waiting for you, sighed Gabby with worry. No problem, babe. Keep the bed warm for me, said Garfield coolly as he left the Normandy to board the derelict reaper. Garfield took Tally and Garrus with him to explore Derelict Reaper for IFF codes. Garfield and Squad searched the Derelict Reaper for IFF codes, finding no one inside. Where is everyone? asked Tally with worry. You women always worry. Relax, big strong man is here, said Garfield with confidence. Garfield, you always know what to say to make woman feel good, said Tally as she grasped his muscular arm. Garrus looked at Garfield and Tally with jealous gaze and sighed to himself with longing dejection. As Garfield comforted Tally with his manly presence, he sensed figures moving in the distance approaching them. They were husks. Aha, uh -huh, Garfield, you will not leave this place alive. Prepare to be digestion, garbled the sinister husks with evil intentions. I do not think so, 
I prefer my food being cooked first, so let us have barbecue, said Garfield slyly as he took out two flamethrowers, lighting a cigar with one. The husks rushed Garfield with great attacks, but it was no use. Garfield torched them with ease, with his special lasagna flamethrowers. One husk jumped on Garfield's back, trying to choke him in piggyback move, but Garfield brushed him off with ease and then stomped on his skull. Let us move quick and get IFF codes, said Garfield as he and Squad ran through the derelict reaper, torching husks as they went. Garfield and Squad finally came to a room with many husks inside discussing plans. We must protect these IFF codes from Garfield, said the husk general to his husk followers. Those IFF codes belong to Garfield, shouted a metallic voice. It was a geth. The reapers must be stopped. I will get those codes, said the geth. Come, we must help, shouted Garfield, barging in flamethrowers blazing with powers. The husk general confronted the geth with evil. None of you will leave with this IFF, said the husk general as he shot the geth. No, screamed the geth as he lay injured. Garfield saw the evil display and became filled with an oily rage of destroyed rainforests. I will get you, said Garfield as he charged through the husks like seashells through sand as he torched them to waste. Garfield then approached the husk general with a strut so manly the ground cried. Garfield, you may be manly, but I will not let you have these IFF codes. It is the orders, said the husk general. Relax, have a smoke, said Garfield, sticking a piece of dynamite in the husk general's mouth. Light up, Garfield wittily commented as he lit the dynamite with his flamethrowers. Mm! Cried out the husk general, mouth stuffed with dynamite. Do not lose your head, quipped Garfield with clever joke, as the husk general's head blew off like geyser in a black hole. Garfield. T. He, injured Geth, was injured and crying for help. Quick, take this Geth, we must bring it back for repairing, ordered Garfield to the squad. But Garfield, Geth are bad menaces, we must not bring it back, they are our enemies, cried out Tally with girlish crying. Shut up, woman, do as I say, roared Garfield, a he backhanded Tally in the face. Yes, Garfield, you are right, and I am wrong, apologized Tali with truth. After apologizing for her stupid sayings, Tali took the geth and followed Garfield and Garrus off the derelict reaper and back on the Normandy. Before leaving the derelict reaper, Garfield said his farewells. Goodbye, reaper. You need a vacation. Here. Why do you not go somewhere sunny?" said Garfield with a chill tone as he punched the reaper with a mighty punch, sending it into a nearby sun. When back on the Normandy, Garfield checked up on the Geth guest to see if all was well. Greetings, Mr. Geth. I am thanking you for your help, but why do you help us? You are Geth, and Geth are evil asked Garfield with good questions. All geth are not evil. Some geth are evil and follow reapers. Other geth are good. I am good geth, said the geth with answers. That is good, but what is your name? asked Garfield. My name is Legion, answered the geth with respect and awe of Garfield. That is a silly name said Garfield with mocking truth. I am sorry, it is not my fault I have silly name, please forgive me, Garfield, begged Legion as he kneeled on the ground. 
It is okay, but do not anger me more. Now stop crying like a woman, scolded Garfield as he left to his quarters. What great man and amazing leader, said Legion in awe to himself. Back in the captain's quarters, Garfield was relaxing and enjoying a nice lasagna dinner when Edie appeared in his room. Garfield, I have need to talk with you, said Edie with longing voice. What is the matter, Edie? asked Garfield with caring concern. Even though I am machine, you make me feel ways no one else can. I see you from my hub and long for you, cried Edie with desire. You have no need to long no more. I will satisfy you and make you feel like real woman, whispered Garfield to Edie as he stroked her. Garfield, come and pleasure my CPU, said Edie with desire. Garfield rubbed Edie's sexy blue body and licked her blue dome. Edie massaged Garfield between his legs, arousing him sensually. Nothing I like better than a good soldier standing erect, said Edie with sassy seduction as she continued to stroke Garfield between his thighs. Garfield then took a hold of Edie, brought her to his bed, and mounted her behind with roaring love. Garfield squeezed Edie with his powerful thighs and thrust into her like runaway tornado. After nearly ten hours of intense lovemaking, Garfield and Edie finally rested, laying on the bed with satisfaction until the morning light. To be continued. Chapter 11 Public Service Health Message Garfield was in his quarters reading his favorite magazine, Hot Women, Weightlifting, Big Guns, and Lasagna. When he heard Mighty Big Ruckus, it was coming from other rooms, so Garfield went to check it out with curious catness. Quarians are better than Geth, we will beat you all, screamed Tali. No, Geth are better, we are going to kill all Quarians, shouted Legion. Legion and Tali were fighting with prejudice over whose has better culture and peoples. Silence! roared Garfield with mediation. Garfield, Geth are evil, I cannot work with them, said Tali with stubbornness. Quarians are all same, dumb and stupid, said Legion with racism. Garfield looked at both of them and then thought of brilliant idea to make them realize values of all peoples. That is enough of this racism. I will teach you how to value each other. You must make love with each of intimate sexuality," said Garfield with great knowledge. What? I cannot do this, said Tali with objection. I will not be naked with Quarian, cried out Legion in despair. You will do it. It is my orders, Captain's orders. I will stay here until you do it said Garfield with courageous commands. With Garfield commands, Tali and Legion knew it was right thing to do, so they began to embrace and make romance. Legion wrapped his metal arms around Tali and began to take off her clothes. Tali then rubbed her body against Legion's glowing metal thighs, as Garfield watched with approval. You look dirty. It looks like you need a polishing, said Tali as she began to lick Legion all over the body with her sexy tongue. Come here, let me show you that robots do it better, said Legion as he grabbed Tali and brought her on top of his groin and began to thrust with automatic motion. Show me your metallic manhood, you rusty bag of bolts, screamed Tali with satisfaction. Legion grabbed Tali and brought her to the light switch, which he turned off, and then they both slid down into darkness to continue their love capade. Garfield smiled with satisfaction, 
knowing he did a job well done, and went back to his quarters to continue relaxation. Later that night, while Garfield was dreaming sweet dreams of sexy ladies covered in lasagna, ready for delicious eating, Garfield was awoken by noises. Garfield, it is emergency! It is all Legion's fault! I got robot STD! cried out Tali with panic. It is not my fault, it is her fault, said Legion pointing at Tali. Garfield looked at them both with wonder and disgustedness. What do you not know about safe sex? asked Garfield with dumbfoundedness. What is safe sex? asked Tally. I do not know, said Legion with wonder. This is serious. We must gather crew to teach benefit of safe sex, ordered Garfield with worry. Garfield gathered crew together for important meetings of grave importance. When everyone gathered, Garfield began his special talk of education. Today I am going to teach you all meaning of safe sex, said Garfield with teaching power. What is safe sex? asked Garris with inquisition. I have never heard this before. I do not know how to do this, said Kelly Chambers with worry. I am scientist and never heard of this in my research, said Dr. Morden Solis with scientific method. It is good thing I am teaching you. It is very important for healthy adults, said Garfield as he drew male anatomy on chalkboard. Here is safe sex, said Garfield as he drew condom over male anatomy. I see, said Jacob with interest. Garfield then took out a pole and put condom on it. Here is another example of safe sex, said Garfield with tutorship. Aha, said Dr. Morden Solis with scientific discovery. Here, everyone try out safe sex, said Garfield, passing out condoms to everyone. Try them on now, ordered Garfield with righteousness. Everyone tried out condoms in front of Garfield and were satisfied by results. Safe sex feels good. Thank you, Garfield, said Miranda with approval. No problem. Remember, safety comes first, even with sex, said Garfield with heroism. After important speech, Garfield towards Kelly Chambers with sassy walk full of romantic intent. Hey there, Kelly. You are fine, young lady. Keep up the good work, said Garfield with compliments. Thank you, Garfield. I just want to make you happy, said Kelly with smile on her face. If you want to make me happy, then you should come with me inside the captain's cabin so I can know you better inside and out. Garfield quit while slapping Kelly rear areas. But Garfield, we have no condoms, we cannot do safe sex, I'm afraid of STDs, whined Kelly with worrying crying. Do not worry, sugar shorts. The only STD I give is pleasure, smirked Garfield with knowing smirk. Garfield, you always know best, let us go, agreed Kelly with joyousness. Garfield then led Kelly to his quarters, so they could continue the blossoming romances. Kelly, you must lap dance for me, or else you are a bad crewman and will be punished, ordered Garfield with brave commands. Yes, sir, I will do as you ask, replied Kelly with obedience. Kelly began to dance and Garfield looked on with romance. Kelly did a very nice lap dance full of satisfaction as she rubbed herself all over Garfield's lap. That is very good. Now you must rub my feet with sexy oil for they ache, said Garfield as he opened a fresh container of lasagna to enjoy. Kelly rubbed Garfield down with sexy oil, relaxing his body as he enjoyed his nutritious lasagna with great gleeful joy. As she finished her massages, Garfield looked up with a look on his face. She knew what to do. Let's do this, 
said Garfield with a wink. Garfield and Kelly merged their bodies like waves in rough beach, rubbing with passion and love. They rocked their bodies all night long, rocking the cosmos with their lovemakings. To be continued. Author's note. Remember everyone to use safe sex. It is the only way to prevent STDs. It is what Garfield does. Chapter 12. When Fate Collides. It was dark night on the Normandy, and tension was high. The dark howlings of space could be heard, and all were on edge. Garfield was in his quarters plotting strategies of great importance. This is the final showdown, thought Garfield to himself. Garfield's team was assembled, and all was ready. Soon, the last attacks on the Collectors would begin, and Galaxy's destiny would be decided. Garfield laid back on his bed, and look on the stars, to guide him in his final conflict. Garfield turned soul-searching music of Europe as he reminisced over friends gained and enemies defeated with fists of justice. Garfield looked out into window in space, his eyes twinkling with the stars and burning like the suns. Just then, Garrus entered the room with urgent feet. Garfield, team is ready for final space combat, said Garrus with solemnness. Yes, it is time. Let us meet for inspiration speech, ordered Garfield with commands. Before leaving, Garfield enjoyed one final meal of lasagna deliciousness. He knew he might be eating his next lasagna in Valhalla, so he treasured every bite as if it were beautiful woman in a lasagna pot covered in sauce. He made love to his lasagna with great power and care. This lasagna is fine, like sweet naked woman. I will eat it through and through, whispered Garfield to himself, and he smelled sweet smell of fresh cooked lasagna and tasted it on his tongues. After enjoying his delicious lasagna meal, Garfield went to the meeting room to make speech to his crew to inspire them to reach for the stars. He jumped up, stood on the table with vigor in his eyes and energy in his heart. He pointed to them all as he delivered most riveting speech in history. Today, we wage war on wicked. No man, woman, or child will stand in our path of fury. All will be mowed down like grass in a rampaging lawnmower. Space is the butter we will cut through like warm knives. In mankind's darkest hour, there is light. We are the light to shine the way to help. We strike while the iron is soft and ready for pounding. Tonight, we are not only soldiers, but warriors, engaging in primordial space combat. We fight for ourselves, our families, our friends, the ladies, and our country. They may say odds are against us, but I will take the odds and beat collectors to death with them, and then shove them down their throats and make them explode. Garfield roared, with inspiration fists clenched and eyes blazing and muscles flexing. Everyone cheered and applauded at Garfield's speech. Jack burst into tears by the inspiration, while Miranda tore off her shirt and threw it at Garfield in a fit of excitement. To your stations! ordered Garfield with manly courage. All of crew went to their positions in preparation of entering the Omega Relay for final showdown. Enter Relay, Garfield ordered with booming voice. As Normandy approached the Omega Relay, cold sweat formed on Garfield's orange brow. Exciting dread filled his heart and stomach. However, as the Normandy approached the Relay, a ship soon approached them. It was a collector ship. As the ship approached, a hologram appeared on their deck. It was the Elusive Man. Elusive Man? What do you want? We are beginning final assault. I have no time for foolishness. Scolded Garfield with harshness. Garfield, you have done well to come this far. 
but you will go no further, for I will put an end to you, the elusive man said with snide evil. What? Traitorous insect! Garfield shouted with betrayal. Haha, <laughs> Garfield, you have done everything according to my plans now. I will finally get vengeance. Enough of this disguises, and see the true face of evil, said elusive man as he removed his cunning disguise to reveal he was Odie. Odie had an eye patch and a cybernetic arm. His shoulder spikes sparkled in spaceflight as his evil cape whooshed in darkness. Odie? You live! gasped Garfield as he looked on in shock. Odie laughed with evil laugh as dark power swirled around him. Yes, Garfield, it is true. The day you killed me, you not only killed my body, but my heart. I lost the ability to love that day. However, I was brought back to life through black magic and cybernetics. With vengeance in my heart and face, I went back in time to the beginnings of the universe and created the Reapers to destroy humanity and get my vengeance. I then waited for eons in the frozen time until now so I can exact my glorious revenge on you and the precious humans. Odie snarled as he clenched his robotic fist filled with evil. You evil fool! I have killed you once, I will be killing you again, challenged Garfield with courage. No, Garfield, I have grown more stronger than you can imagine. My powers of evil are unstoppable. Witness my supreme might, Odie said as he used dark cosmic powers to capture Garfield's ship crew, leaving only himself and his combat squad members. No! screamed Garfield in despairing cry as he witnessed the horrors. Now it is time for you to meet the Oblivion. Be gone! growled Odie with Bellow as he shot lasers at the Normandy, sending it spiraling into space to be lost for eternities. Odie laughed and laughed as Garfield and his friends crashed to their seeming doom. To be continued.